The term broken arrow refers to the loss of a nuclear weapon. This term is famously quoted by the 1996 film with the same title, with the actor saying, I don't know what's scarier, losing nuclear weapons, or that it happens so often there's actually a term for it. Between 1950 and 1980, there were 32 cases of nuclear weapon accidents. Of these 32 incidents, there are six cases where the nuclear weapon was lost altogether. Hey guys, welcome back to I Learn Today. In today's video, we're going to look at the six nuclear warheads that were lost by the U.S. military and never found. July 28, 1957, Atlantic Ocean. Over the Atlantic Ocean, the engines of a C-124 freight plane that had taken off from Dover Air Force Base in Delaware failed. According to a 2006 report from the U.S. Department of Energy, the plane's extra two engines weren't enough to help it maintain a straight course. At the time, there were four nuclear warheads and one nuclear capsule aboard the C-124. Fortunately, the capsule wasn't hooked to any weapons, so there was no danger of a nuclear blast. The C-124 crew likely decided to abandon two of the weapons on way to an emergency landing near Atlantic City, New Jersey. In light of this, maybe to reduce the aircraft's overall weight and enhance its range. Both weapons were released from great heights, the first from 4,500 feet, the second from 2,500 feet. After falling from such a tremendous height, both weapons likely sustained damage and were subsequently submerged nearly quickly, as stated in the study. As all was going on, the jet safely landed with the nuclear bomb and capsule still on board. The study notes that there is a range of ocean depths close to the jettisoned objects, but that a search for the weapons or debris yielded negative findings. Unlike the other incidents on this list, which typically involve bombers or assault planes, this one involved a transport plane. As stated by Christensen, only cargo planes such as the C-17s piloted by the Air Force are authorized to transport American nuclear weapons for repair, replacement, or redeployment. Christensen further explained that the United States government prefers to use safer ground transportation like trucks and trains when transporting nuclear weapons within the country, but that flights are required for transporting nuclear weapons to and from locations in Europe. The Department of Energy uses modified tractor trailers fitted with booby traps, immobilizing foam, and tear gas for road transport of nuclear weapons. But you shouldn't relax just yet. There's always the chance that something unexpected will come up. Christensen pointed out that there are still plenty of opportunities for isolated incidents given that the United States maintains thousands of nuclear weapons in a dozen states. February 5, 1958, Tybee Island, Georgia. At 3.30 in the morning, while flying a training mission out of Homestead Air Force Base in Florida, an Air Force B-47 bomber clashed with nothing but an F-85 fighter plane. According to the Department of Defense's list of nuclear weapons mishaps, the B-47 pilot attempted to return three times at the adjacent Hunter Air Force Base in Georgia, but the aircraft was in poor condition and could not slow down sufficiently to make a safe landing. Instead of taking a chance on blowing up the base with the Mark 15 Mod Zero nuclear weapons 400 pounds of hydrogen bombs, the pilot chose to abandon the weapon in Wasaw Sound, close to Tybee Island, Georgia. Thankfully, the nuclear weapon did not detonate despite falling from a height of around 7,200 feet. While the B-47 made a safe landing, the missing bomb was never located. A ship, divers, and an underwater demolition squad equipped with handheld sonar devices conducted the search over a three-square-mile area. According to a BBC article from earlier this month, a retired military officer and his partner also examined the sound with a Geiger counter in 1998, but were unsuccessful. According to a report from the BBC, the Department of Energy now thinks the 7,600-pound bomb is lying somewhere between 5 and 15 feet below the surface of the water. The Department of Energy has stated that there is no chance of a nuclear explosion occurring at this time or in the foreseeable future, and the likelihood of a spread of heavy metals is likewise low, although this could change if the weapon is disturbed. It's preferable not to wake up nuclear dogs that are already asleep. September 25, 1959, off the Washington, Oregon coast. While hauling an unarmed nuclear anti-submarine weapon, a military P-5M seaplane in use for naval forces and pro-government fighting exploded in the Pacific Ocean, approximately 100 miles west of the Washington-Oregon state boundary. According to the Broken Arrow Project of the University of Southern California, all 10 of the crew members were saved and sustained the collision. 
The nuclear bombs also weren't retrieved and may still be on the ocean bottom now because they did not include any radioisotypes. Center of controversy after a B-52 bomber crew flew from Minot Air Force Base, North Dakota, to Parksdale Air Force Base, Louisiana, without realizing that six nuclear missiles had been inadvertently installed in the aircraft's wings. Indeed, the theft of nuclear weapons from land-based installations is of much greater concern to the United States government than the ones it has lost at sea. In 2007, for instance, the Air Force was at the center of controversy after a B-52 bomber crew flew from Minot Air Force Base, North Dakota, to Barksdale Air Force Base, Louisiana, without realizing that six nuclear missiles had been inadvertently installed to the aircraft's wings. Christensen said that for about 48 hours, the United States Air Force had no idea where six of its nuclear weapons were. That's a major scandal for sure. Air Force Secretary and Chief of Staff resigned and other major reforms were made as a result of the incident that improved oversight of the United States' nuclear command, controls, and procedures. However, accidents do occur, which is why the United States government focuses more on operational nukes than the ones that were lost at sea. Air Force Secretary and Chief of Staff resigned and other major reforms were made as a result of the incident that improved oversight of the United States' nuclear command, controls, and procedures. However, accidents do occur, which is why the United States government focuses more on operational nukes than the ones that were lost at sea. January 24, 1961, Goldsboro, North Carolina. As it was on an alert mission for the Air Force, a B-52 crashed and released two nuclear bombs. The parachute on one bomb worked as intended, and the explosive landed with minimal destruction. The other explosive, however, became dislodged and fragmented upon impact, preventing its detonation by a hair's breadth. Later that year, after Robert McNamara became Secretary of Defense, he used this and another nuclear weapon lost over Texas as examples of how close the United States has come to accidental detonations despite paying millions of dollars to minimize this problem to a minimum. The Department of Energy reported in 2006 that despite digging down 50 feet into soggy farmland, they were unable to recover the uranium used to make the nuclear bomb. Christensen elaborated on how the nuclear core of such a weapon would sink deeply into the mud if dropped from a large height, as uranium is one of the densest metals on Earth. The Air Force bought the site after failing to locate the bomb, and now anyone wishing to conduct excavations there must obtain the service's permission. The Department of Energy stated that they had found no evidence of any radioactive material or other dangers in the area. In the 1980s, the United States Department of Defense declassified its record of incidents involving nuclear weapons. Human mistakes or mechanical problems on board the aircraft delivering the nuclear bombs or carrying them as part of Operation Chrome Dome have been blamed for many Broken Arrow events, according to a government investigation. The U.S. Air Force kept its B-52 bombers equipped with thermonuclear bombs on constant airborne alert from 1960 to 1968. The increased disaster risk associated with having nuclear weapons in the air year-round was a contributing factor in the program's demise. December 5, 1965, the Philippine Sea This missing weapon vanished in the ocean on the other side of the planet, whereas the North Carolina bomb was buried deep beneath American soil. Using the aircraft carrier USS Ticonderoga's elevator, a Navy pilot rolled his A-4 Skyhawk attack plane on board. The B-43 thermonuclear weapon was on board the plane since it was part of a drill. Once the weapons loaders and other sailors saw that the Skyhawk was ready to go over the side, everything went downhill. Directing the pilot to use the brakes, the men in yellow shirts suddenly began feverishly blowing their whistles with their fists crossed. Retired Chief Petty Officer Delbert Mitchell, who helped load the bomb aboard the plane that day, remembered the incident in an essay for Naval History magazine. But the Skyhawk kept rolling, Mitchell wrote. Mitchell pointed out that the pilot wasn't paying attention to the whistles since he was gazing down at the controls, but it didn't stop the sailors from trying to prevent the disaster. Mitchell described the director's dash to the plane with signals and whistles of urgency. The Skyhawk kept flying. To prevent the airplane from rolling away, one of the blue shirts threw a chalk around the starboard main mount tire. There was nothing left of the pilot but his helmet when rescuers arrived. The rest, the sailor reported, looked to have sunk to the ocean floor some 16,000 feet below the surface. 
Since the core of a B-43 thermonuclear weapon cannot be removed, Christensen claims this is the only weapon on our list that could have caused a nuclear detonation if it had been lost. Although the event occurred within 70 miles of Japan's Ryukyu Islands, the United States did not inform Japan's government of it until 1989. Other Incidents There are many more nuclear weapons at the bottom of the sea than just the one lost in 1965. The American submarine Scorpion went down in the Atlantic Ocean in May 1968 for an unknown reason, taking with it two nuclear-armed Mark 45 Astor missiles. The U.S. government discovered the crash and knows exactly where it is, although it hasn't retrieved the weapons there, thus the event wasn't added to the list of lost nuclear weapons. Recent disasters in the Atlantic Sound and the Philippine Sea pale in comparison to the errors made by the Soviet Union. A Soviet Yankee 1-class nuclear-powered missile submarine, which experienced an explosion and fire in one of its missile tubes on October 3, 1986, sits dormant about 600 miles northeast of Bermuda, at a depth of roughly 18,000 feet. Three days later, the submarine that had been carrying 34 nuclear bombs went down. Even though U.S. forces found no radioactivity in the air or water near the submarine, more warheads went missing as a result of that incident than are included in this list. Just because the U.S. is a developed state and a country that is considered a superpower doesn't mean that it is excluded from mishaps like these happening again. What do you think? Don't forget to share your thoughts with us in the comments section below. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. I'll see you in the next video. Take care and stay tuned.